be fun. Wake the dog up. Perhaps we should perform this operation somewhere else. I say go for it. You're a low-level novice, and you better get used to being treated like one. And I also remember you telling me that this team could benefit if I just humbled myself. Yeah, shrunk the ego a little bit. Perhaps it's time you took the same advice. You heard it up top. We have hit it again. That's right. Another big number here on Normies Like Us means we're going to do a special episode where your hosts just relax and talk about what they've been loving and hit y'all with some recommendations. And let's meet those hosts because it's us. That's right. Your host, uh, Colin. Yeah, and just normal, normal Michael, Mike here, yeah. Hum, human Mike, uh-huh. and normal human Jacob. That's right. Hello, normies. <laughs> Hello, normies. Two hundred and sixty episodes. Maui, wow, wow, wow. What, what a, a milestone. Uh huh. We're getting closer to three hundred. That's um, that's yeah, we're getting million dollars to one dollars to one something big for three hundred. <laughs> yeah. So stay wow. Tuned. We're going to put the secret code word in each episode, and whoever yep. finds all the code words will get a great That's code. right. You can either get a million dollars or you guest appear on an episode. Uh-huh. The choice is yours. I mean, that's a pretty big choice right there. One or is we priceless. Shout you out on air. <laughs> that's right. One just, is priceless. Shout out. But yeah, we're excited to do the Watcha. You know, we finished our um, uh, year and a half long mission of watching all the Star Trek feature films last week. And, uh, you know, that wasn't our only mission during that time. And so we're here to kind of wrap up some of the odds and ends, the errata, the other stuff that we've uh, been checking out, uh, you know, playing, gaming, I don't know, reading, streaming. Well, we're going to get to all of it, I guess. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's fun to do a watch you. And it's always good to have another milestone. So, yeah. Do we just jump right into it? Jump into the watch. Let's do it. Let's jump right in after this intro short and sweet we're back here on normies like us doing a watch yeah we're like we said we're gonna relax we're gonna chat um real quick i'm gonna answer a listener question believe this or not i I got this text off pod from a former guest ally what up what up who said hey did y'all do a a secret invasion episode um and here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start with a little TV here, real quick, and and I just want to wrap this up, and we'll we'll include this and say we didn't. No, um, I believe we all watched it. Mike, did you not watch it? I have not watched it. Uh, I thought okay. I was the only person who did watch it here. Yeah. Right. Well, I so well here's a, and, you watched but Jacob. It. You watched the whole thing. I did. Okay, I watched. I think two episodes and a bunch of clips including something you shared at the end that completely blew my mind but all this to say we kind of missed it timing wise and then quality did not deem this worthy of an episode no unfortunately i started you know it started okay i was a little into it to start and then by the end of it i was like uh not great not great so no and i think a lot of people agreed with the i mean the last episode it's rating on uh, Metacritic or whatever is like the lowest, one of the lowest MCU ratings of anything. So yeah, um, people did not like the final episode of this show. Yeah. And I've been out on some of the MCU. So, you know, I was getting fatigued, even the, like I'm an Ant-Man liker. And I was even like, damn dude, Ant-Man three, I'm kind of tired now. So oh, I, yeah. I ever watched She-Hulk or some of those other shows that you guys watch and you guys enjoyed that from what I understand. Right. This and we didn't really talk about She-Hulk either, did we? Uh, no, no, I guess that's true. Here's the thing. That's what's interesting, Jacob. On the back end side, to be fully transparent with our listeners, Marvel episodes used to do very well for our podcast. People mm-hmm. would come in and sort of like check those out. Now we can kind of afford to be like, do we want to skip this one? So that's Which kind of an wild. interesting yeah. state of affair for them. Yeah. Well, some of the TV, the streaming fair. Yeah. I thought Secret Invasion was going to be like a big deal, but um, really weird. Like, I don't know, just a wasted opportunity kind of. She-Hulk, I actually did like. I think that that was actually a really good show. It got a lot of hate online, too. So I'm kind of surprised. But um, yeah, I was a big fan of She-Hulk. Captain Marvel's coming up. Will we do an episode Mm. on that? Yeah, that's. I thought the trailer... The trailer looked fun for that, but ultimately, I think it'll be a pretty forgettable movie. Um, but it looks fun. It's the shortest MCU movie ever at like an hour. Oh, 
37 minutes or that something. Makes me so really I kind of like that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, Mike, I'm with you. How do they do a 90 page script? Yeah, geez. Right. Um, and the idea of the powers transferring, I'm not sure how that's going to articulate. So I'm, I'm intrigued by the weird hook. And if it's an hour and a half, maybe you can talk me into it. But yeah, the, the, the we, shows, not me. We did not do a Kamala Khan episode. I, mean, I haven't no, watched Miss Marvel another, either. Yeah. That's another show I've not skipped. seen. That either. Uh, I think it's like teen. This, aimed at a teen demographic though so what's know. interesting about secret invasion is that it's kind of a sequel to the first captain marvel with mm -hmm. the scrolls and everything but it's also kind of a sequel to um just like end game and stuff and avengers um, avengers and it's just a i mean it's a nick fury centered show uh mm -hmm. and but it was just kind of i don't know it it's weird, a year too show. old for this shit show. And, you know, yeah. like I like that in a Lethal Weapon movie that's like an hour and a half long or two hours long. But like, what, six, seven episodes? What is it? Too much. Yeah. yeah. And, and last it's... time we saw him, he was chilling like on a beach chair in space. And now he's fucking sure. tired of it. Like... Well, that's yeah. He's been in the space station for a long time. Right. Comes back to Earth because there's this whole skull scroll problem that he was kind of created as as a younger man. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, it had this whole spy thriller vibe that it wanted to go for, but I thought it could even have leaned harder into that. And by the end of it, I was just, it was just falling flat to me. And like some of the big moments that were supposed to be like big moments, just, just fell flat for me. Like spoiler alert for the first episode, uh, Maria Hill dying. Oh, um, oh, wow. Yeah. That could have been like, you finally get a show centered around Nick Fury and Maria Hill dies in the first episode i just thought that was kind of weird um, oh, i'm at your grave yeah i mean she's Wild. been in the you know in that universe for how many years list just uh you know usually just nick fury's assistant or whatever but yes. uh, <laughs> and i thought you know it had a good cast like it had a really stacked cast for some reason you had olivia coleman mm -hmm. you had uh yeah. don Cheadle. you know you had these big Martin actors Amelia clark Amelia clark uh yes yes and, and i don't know it's waste opportunity and Batista's Batista's yes. arm. <laughs> well that's if the you, moment that, if you uh, haven't that's, seen i've this seen that going on social media Jacob so I'm to, yeah. <laughs> listeners please scrolls. you have to watch this thing well yeah. it's basically the worst dragon ball fight you've ever seen in your life uh -huh. uh, and again that's supposed to be like this cool episode. moment where they're like cycling through all these Avengers and villain powers that they've absorbed. Um, and it just could not have like fallen flatter for me. And there's a shot yeah. where, yeah, Amelia Clark flexes her arm and it's Batista's arm and it just looks really Drax's arm. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen that. That's all I needed to see. So I did not. Uh... And it's, it's a bummer because it's such a beloved comic run, the secret invasion arc, uh, you know, from what and I it's leading up to mm -hmm. secret wars, yeah, obviously secret wars, like... which is going to be like the big next Avengers. Ah, all movie, the right? secrets so secret yeah. but i did want to shout out kingsley benadir who was the villain mm. uh in that and also he was in barbie as one of the kens mm -hmm. and um i thought he was great as the villain he just needed kind of better material to work with maybe um but a really good presence so you know he's someone to, to watch i guess that's a yeah that's that's a difficult movie to look up the cast for like wait who played barbie no, not yeah. That. Who played who Ken? Played, right. Well, yeah, which one? Yeah. So, uh, but that, that's Barbie. Barbie. Who played I know. I know. Who played, played Allen. Was playing. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Good shout out. Um. Yeah. So, Secret Evasion. It seems like whatever of it you guys watched, you did not like. General people didn't like it, and I avoided it one hundred percent because I was like, "This is going to be bad." But I want to pivot to a show that I thought was going to be really bad, that actually turned out to be really good. Uh, and that's mm. a shout out to uh, Peacock original twisted metal oh, oh yes dude so Came mike this is yes absolutely and maybe another victim of timing because this mm -hmm. this really became something that we all kind of mutually started texting each other about and being like yo i love this thing and we yeah. just didn't get to an episode so yes I, I love you shouting it out yeah yeah and this is like based on a video game twisted metal started in the ps1 era it's car combat arcade style you know rockets and stuff arena combat crazy characters so i'm like how do you make this a tv show and i think the way they did the writing and the character building and references to the game i'm not in super super familiar but i would look up stuff and be like wow that's is from the game and i would be pleasantly surprised by the amount of lore they included 
and just to yeah. take that concept and make it work there's like emotional moments like i would get a little misty here and there like i actually cared about the characters it's funny uh Samoa I, joe and will arnett are working in perfect harmony. yes <laughs> yeah. absolutely what a cast i get a little nervous when anthony mackie is the lead in stuff mm -hmm. but i gotta say didn't mind him this is yeah i, I was... would rather watch this than uh, falcon and winter soldier again like yes. i would watch this entire show again I was watching this um, right before this episode, actually, because I was trying to finish the season so I could talk about it. And I didn't get all the way through, but I got ah. um, I was on the last episode. So I saw the beginning of the last episode. So I, I was surprised by how twisted metal that it actually gets where they're by the ninth you episode saw the stuff. in a situation where it's a bunch of cars mm -hmm. in an arena fighting each other. Yeah, you got Sweet Tooth there. You know what s season two needs? Um, the only other specific like character or car from the game that i remember other than sweet tooth was that like it's like a guy that's like Axel. standing Dog. up yeah Dog. and he's Axel. holding like two big Jacob, wheels on each of his, his arms, arms and wheels. yeah <laughs> low recommendation for mike and i real quick finish that episode my oh man. yeah does he get a does he get a mention that's There's what i've been waiting for what season two yeah. is gonna be and it's it sure sounds fucking awesome <laughs> so but when this show started i was i was into it and i was like you know what this reminds me of? Well, this is what I would want like a fallout show or a post-apocalyptic show to be where it's like each community kind of has its own thing. It reminds me of uh, a game I mentioned uh, last week or the week for um, mm -hmm. Wasteland, Wasteland 3, mm -hmm. where it's yeah. a post-apocalyptic. You're going around to different communities. They each have their like quirks about them. There's one community that is like they worship this like giant statue of Ronald Reagan as like a god. So they're all like 1980s right. Reaganites. And it's just, and this show kind of has that quirky sense of humor to it uh, that I would want in a Fallout show. And they actually are making a Fallout show, apparently soon. Oh, right. So, uh, right. Um, with Walton Goggins and and some other actors. So hopefully that'll be as good as this Twisted Metal show is. Who knows? Yeah. I, yeah. Every every little township is kind of loosely based on a, a character from the game. So they all have a specific gimmick, which is fun. You know, it's like you know. It's like it's like warriors. Oh, these guys all dress in baseball yes. clothes. Like it's very yes, fun like yes. that. And then yes. um I texted you guys and I said it's like fun The Last of Us cuz it is about yes. like transporting a thing across right. dangerous territory, but it's just That's what Fallout should be. And you know? fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really I was really surprised. So no spoilers or nothing. Just watch Twisted Metal even if you've never played the yes. game. It's it's delightful yeah. and enjoyable. And I didn't really know a lot of the references to the game, but I assumed like like Officer Stone you know mm -hmm. Thomas Hayden Church's character. I figured he was probably yes. a character, like a yeah. drove a police car or whatever. 100%. Yeah, the so, outlaw yeah. or whatever yeah. it's called. Now I am shocked here. Both of you guys weren't under these. I battle car games. You know, I know you guys have your soccer one now, but uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this right, one. Car soccer. We need that boy, cyber something else, not cyber sleds, which was a game I was into. But there, I I loved vehicle destroy each mm. other video games as a kid, especially right. Twisted Metal. I did play right. this game when I was a kid, but I would always play it at my friend's house who had PlayStation because yeah. I had Nintendo. Mm. Um, so I would go over to my friend's house. We play some Twisted Metal. We play some like Rampage on the PlayStation. You know, mm -hmm. so nice. good times. Mr. Grim, always... the motorcycle. I want him too. I want Grim and yeah. the motorcycle guy. Uh, that's another good one. But uh, yeah, I really can't uh, wait for season two once they pay everybody because the writers did a yeah. good job. Shout out to those. It's going to be a while. Everyone. Shout out to the Deadpool guys and the Zombieland guys. So it, it makes oh, sense. Uh, yeah. Rhett Miller, mm. or Rhett Reese and S Stephen Miller, Phil Miller. I, I cannot remember their names, but uh, right. yeah, they're the creative team behind this. And shout out I mean, to Mike Mitchell from the Doughboys. That's right. Hey, hey, right. Stu. A real character from the games. There's two. Mike and Stu. Stu. I did remember them as well. Yeah. They drive a well, car together. Uh, they Stephanie the, Beatrice. She is a yes. new character, I believe. Quiet mm. is new. Quiet. Evelyn yes. is a brand new car, but the car at the end is that they both get is from the games. I can't remember the name of Road it. Roadkill. 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 Yeah. yeah and, um, okay. That mm -hmm. F1 kind of style car is also from the game. Twister. Like yes. Twister, yes. Correct. When they're so. saying their code names, like it's Twister time. I was like, I'm sure that's it. probably it's, from the game. It's Twister yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then she twists. Of course. Them. Of course. Yeah, but it was fun. Gardner lady, the whole thing. So yeah, I love to. I will say, like Will Arnett, I thought his, he did fine. But um, you know, Samoa Joe, he could have done the voice himself. He does voiceover work as well. So I'm, I, 
thought, you know, they could have just stuck with his voice instead of combining his body with Will Arnett's voice. It but, does feel like one performance, but Samoa Joe yeah. has the charisma and ability to have done it, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he sure. did a good job miming the motions of, of things, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Shout out Twisted Metal. Great show. Yeah, Check big. it out. Peacock. Yeah. You got original. one. Get on the Just cock. That and, and poker We're always face. telling you. Poker face. Yep. Yeah. Only on the cock. Um, Only on the cock. Only on yeah, the cock. Yeah. Does, does someone else want to shout something else? I want to go back to back. I have one more show that I've been watching, but I, I'm not in love with it. Oh. So I'm not dying to talk about it. Well, Colin and mm-hmm. I have a show that we like to watch on Max, uh, and it deals with not racing, but maybe dun, a different dun, dun, sport. Dun, 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 dun. A little oh. basketball. Um, we're okay. talking... Winning time, the story of the 1980s Lakers. Okay. Uh, you know, John C. Riley is Jerry Buss, the owner. Um, you have Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, you know, the rest of the wacky cast of real people. So it's based on real life, but kind of heightened in a mm-hmm. sort of dramatic way. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Some of the real people, right uh, you know, have some <laughs> issues with. Yeah. Uh, right. Grab your hairline, Jacob, slick it back with some oil and <laughs> give me your best Jack Nicholson impression because it's showtime and right. uh, do your best Pat Riley, too, because like, look, here's the thing. Well, we watch this show. <laughs> okay, Put your converse on. Uh-huh. Yeah. We watch this show and I, it, I'm very sports right now. Spoiler for some other stuff, Normies, but we're about to do our fantasy league. Um, we're also watching uh, Hard Knocks, the the football documentary on Max. Max mm-hmm. is maxing out with some sports. We're watching uh, Winning Time. But what I like about it is, and I think it's what you like about it too. Please let me know if, I, if I'm wrong here. Sure. But the fact that you can enjoy it on two levels of, wow, this is great, like a soap opera. And then the other part of your brain that's like, there's no way any of this happens yeah. <laughs> there's no way this well, is true for a second as everybody starring it or everybody that it's about in it uh, has pointed out yes it's, just it's as more as gran turismo i assume yeah. based on it's a real based on the true story yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the general vibe of the times and heightened you know they're portraying certain characters with um certain characteristics that are heightened for a dramatic effect i think um but it's all sort of based in truth. But then, yeah, I mean, a lot of biopics and things like that, they divert from the truth for dramatic reasons. Like a good story is more important than it's not a documentary. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, the, uh... yeah, I think it's, you know, interesting to watch it as either someone who doesn't know the the true story because they're not like a huge basketball fan. They don't know basketball in the eighties and that kind of thing, or the history of basketball or someone like me who is a big basketball fan that's like my favorite sport, mm-hmm. even more than football. So I, I know a lot of history of basketball and that kind of thing. So I know a lot of the true story. So it's fun to see like how they dra- dramatize certain events um, mm-hmm. and, you know, what really happened kind of. Um, but I wish I was watching it with you, Colin, so I could just yes. like, give you all these asides while we're watching it. And this stuff. this would be <laughs> a good water cooler rings? show, all of Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like I say, like, oh, this player they're show. talking about trading for mitch Kupchak, he would go on to become like the general manager of the lakers after uh oh my Jerry god West and and yeah so they need a pop-up like, up trivia option to like have little yeah. fun facts and yeah, that right awesome. like amazon uh-huh. um yeah <laughs> that's right it's, it's shot well it's, too right sorry it's the gimmicks the you know everything it's very adam mckay who shot the pilot yeah. gets an executive you know sets the tone whatever so it's got this sort of like they're going to break the fourth wall. There's going to be a lot of effects to mask the fact that, like, look, they didn't really fill. Um, it's not called the Staples Center then. What 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 is it? The just forum. Called? The forum. Yeah, thank the you. Forum. Yeah. Um, uh, they're not filling that with a million fans. So obviously everything is CG. And there they have to sort of distort it and make it look like it is shot on 1979 film to make it look like that. But again, right. the story, the dramatization. The fact that we're both Californians now and you're seeing California at a cool time with uh, really realistic characters going to real places out here that they shot at. Yeah. Um, But I'll say this, Jacob. I do not watch this for a second for the white guys, which are mainly the biggest stars. You, you of course, have Adrian Brody, John um, uh, John C. C. Riley. Uh, You know, just like the, the biggest actors in it. I watch it for... 
the players, the guy who plays Kareem and the guy who plays Magic are yeah. fucking insanely good. And those well, are two of the gonna... coolest people of all time. So Yeah. First of all, the the storylines of this era of basketball were really easy to follow in like a narrative way and like interesting where you had Magic versus uh, Larry Bird. You had the Lakers versus the Celtics. That was the big rivalry of right, that time. Right. And it still is, but there's so many Years, other good teams yes. now and stuff that it's more diluted. But like in the 80s, it was like Lakers versus Celtics, East versus West, Magic versus Larry Bird. And then the other thing is like the casting is so good. Like the guy that plays Magic is amazing. Like if you he's watch incredible. young interviews of Magic Johnson, like he's he gets his manners and like exactly like his smile, like he's great. And then he's maybe the most charming person who's ever been on screen. Yeah. Quincy Isaiah. I'm seeing here. Quincy the Isaiah. Yeah. yeah. Solomon. Hughes. And he's kind of a newer newcomer. And so is the guy that plays uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So they're not mm. well-known actors yet, but they, they're, they're killing it. And then even like Adrian Brody is Pat Riley to me. Like they nailed that casting so well. And Pat Riley, if you know anything about basketball, he would go on to become um, for the Miami heat, like the president of basketball. And so he's like this, really wow. kind of mythic figure now in basketball and you can kind of see how he decision. starts yes. yeah like a and there's this whole uh yeah. um you know rivalry with him where he's the assistant coach to jason siegel's paul jason westhead Siegel. who, uh mm -hmm. you can kind of see the tensions going on there and if you know the true history you know what's going to happen i won't spoil it for anyone who is hanging oh my on god to you. there's a you know the spoilers of it all Right. Yeah, yes, but yes. you can Incredible. kind of see the foreshadowing coming. And then you're seeing more of the, the, the Celtics this year with, with Larry Bird. And I like the guy that plays Larry Bird a lot, too. A lot. Um, they just did a Larry Bird kind of focused episode. And yeah, so it's fascinating stuff. I would love to see if this, you know, once this show is over, maybe do like a Michael Jordan Bulls era show. Dog, if I could see, I was going to say center Ooh, around yeah, the Pippen worm. And Dennis because... Rodman. Dog, yeah. literally Rodman, because, you know, MJ gets so much fucking coverage, but I am right there with you, dude. I, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, that is and then really you have Scottie idea. Pippen, the second banana. You have Dennis Rodman, one of the craziest characters that's ever been in the NBA. Can you truly imagine so. those episodes where he just goes like, Coach, I got to go to Vegas and gamble for 24 hours. I'm yes. sorry. And they're like, I go ahead and get it out of your system. And if you've ever seen The Last mm -hmm. Dance, uh, fantastic so uh, documentary series. Um, it's ripe for the narrative uh, adaptation, and then you could also do the Kobe yes. Shaq Lakers after that if you want. Yes. To well, so. and then you, that, by then you're so far out. There is because you're saying is Los Angeles, you know, the Celtics Lakers in that time, but you know it reminds me a little bit of Golden State Cleveland for a bit. There's like yes. three years. Yeah. Well, that'll be in like 30 years. Yeah, be, then yeah, you do. Right. Yeah, Steph, that. yeah, yeah, that's in LeBron, and that's so annoying. Yeah. yeah, it's his. It'll be his son playing him. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie. Ronnie by that point, yeah. He's gonna have to <laughs> yeah. take a step off the court. He's gonna have to become an actor. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, um well, he already did in uh Space Jam. He did a great, great job. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh yeah. you know, it's a great show. I love the first season, and the second season has been even better. And so I'm always excited to watch that on Sundays yes. every week. So yeah, check out Must winning time. time. Yeah, the most overlap I had in my young, you know, childhood age with basketball was that Kareem Abdul Jabbar fought bruce lee in game of death and that's yeah. like the only reason i knew who that and, was and i thought he was the coolest guy ever he's so much taller he's so cool in that scene i'm like kareem Abdul yes Jabbar, you're the man and, kareem, and i keep waiting for some kind of reference it's 1979 mike so bruce has been dead for like a bit by this point we do yeah. see him shoot airplane as well but that's here's right. here's my take on kareem real quick because truly i think he is the coolest and most interesting guy who ever existed mm -hmm. here's what drives me crazy about this show jacob we just had Larry Bird have acne. Yeah, cool. That's like very realistic and cool. Uh, uh, a very like true to life. It's like, again, very documentarian style. How dare you keep showing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's bald spot? That is, I know it's true, but it is so well, he's disrespectful. Older. The captain. Cover and... that goddamn shit up. That is so disrespectful <laughs> to the coolest man who has ever existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing is when, so when Magic joins the team, so you not only have the rivalry of Magic and Bird, which started in college too, which makes it even more interesting that yes. Magic beat Larry Bird's team in the NCAA, you know, March Madness yeah. tournament of that year, uh, and then they go. But both was get not the number one draft, right? Wow. Um. So yeah, Magic. So they both have grudges against each other. But also when Magic joins the Lakers, Kareem, who had been in the end, he had one of the longest NBA careers of all time. He was he played for like twenty plus something years. Wow. Um. So he was older by this time. And Kareem, he's a really cool guy, but he's very 
different than a lot of NBA stars where he was very private with his private life. He didn't like talking to the press. So he came off as standoffish kind of to a lot of people because he was, but he really, he was just like camera shy. He didn't want to be doing interviews and stuff. And he's a Muslim man in America who yeah. has so much like political, you know, insights and depth. He converted and to Islam and social, yeah. when he was in college. Yeah. And that was a big thing with, you know, race relations at that time and everything. Um, so he went through a lot, but uh, he had one of the longest and best careers of any NBA player. And because he was just so consistent, you know, for 20 plus years, he was just doing the same thing. It's kind of like LeBron's doing now. Um, oh, yes, dude. LeBron's mm -hmm. one of the few people that can rival him in terms of longevity of his career. But uh, so you see the dynamic between the the outgoing, charismatic magic and the quiet, more standoffish, uh, private Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And you see the, the dynamic and the chemistry in the team and stuff. It's just really fascinating stuff. So, yeah, check nice. out that show. Yeah, it's had some positive buzz. I don't follow a ton of basketball, but maybe it would be interesting for me to kind of learn the broad strokes of this true story, you know, like yeah. at least dramatically. Yeah, I, I think really NBA out of all sports has like the most interesting storylines yeah. and like it's season to season. Like they just have the biggest characters and it's more star driven than like football or hockey. Mm -hmm. Like right. you might like a show about the L.A. Kings or something, but I don't even know what the dramatic narratives would be in that, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. And it just doesn't, there's some, you can shoot basketball, like people are familiar with it. It's more for a regular audience too. So it has more reach, you know, and it is hard. To yeah. Like, what are the big storylines? Um, right. It's winning time. It Gretzky, Gretzky leaves. To the Kings. Uh, for, he leaves the Maple Leaves and goes to the Kings. I was literally about the to Oilers, say, Mike. Yes. Yeah. Gretzky, then, the Gretzky Oilers, biopic sorry. is like one of the few things I can yeah. see that for historical like NHL stuff. There's a good documentary yeah. called the King's ransom about that mm. trade. Uh -huh. uh, and just briefly without that, that's what made hockey popular in Southern California. It's not like what Messi's doing right now in Florida. And without oh, sure. Gretzky coming here with the Kings, we wouldn't have the Anaheim ducks or the San Jose sharks. Like mm -hmm. this oh, wow. whole growth of the sport down here. And then the Kings would eventually win, you know, two cups in three years and they're coming yeah. back to the window, but obviously we're Messi mighty ducks fans. Ducks fly together. That's right, right. We wouldn't Knuckle have the Mighty Ducks movie without that. Um, clack, clack. <laughs> um, that's interesting because Messi coming to MLS is interesting because that's like pretty much the best of the sport coming to a not very good league and just destroying everyone. It looks like, like he's five goals a game. Yeah. <laughs> what if <laughs> I crazy. destroyed you? Yeah. <laughs> what if I went but, down to the minor leagues? <laughs> but now he can go to Costco with his family and not get mobbed because nobody knows who he is here. Right. <laughs> like good most people him. don't care about soccer. <laughs> And it's that's Sports Corner. That's right. Uh, sports yeah. Corner. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> we love sports. I have one more uh, show that I have been watching that I want to mention, but I don't want to advocate for. And that show is The Witcher Season 3. Mm, My oh. goodness. Did this take a Mike, turn for the worst? <laughs> how far did you get? Or Listen, are you done? Episode First six. of all, I was already out. Episode 6. Okay. Halfway through Season 2, I'm I was out. I'm forcing myself. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I was out early. just getting show. worse, I feel. It, it shortly, like... There's just too many moments where like the like Geralt will defeat the main villain and then just not kill them or like yep. a villain be giving a speech and there's ample time to just stop them before they enact their plan and people just stand there and wait until the bad thing happens. And like the writing is just really, really, really bad. Nobody ever takes the opportunity to solve the problem like a normal person would. It's like everything is just right. contrived and I'm really upset with how mm. incompetent What if I just write you a letter? Yeah, it's bad. So it's I'm not interesting with the Liam. Uh, yeah, Richard you know, they announced first. the casting decision before the season came out. So we knew going into the season, Henry Cavill will not be back. It will be Liam, Hemsworth. not Neeson, Hemsworth. Liam yes. Hemsworth. No, it's Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson would be interesting. Liam Hemswitcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got so old. So well, not once, even like once the best gets Hemsworth. taken, it's Liam Neeson. It's like, I, I got yeah. to back. That's so you get like a B level Hemsworth replacing Henry Cavill. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll just pipe in here real quick and say um, I finished this. It's the two parts. So you're in the start of part two, then, right? Yeah, Mike? they just did five the R2s, uh, the big R2s, a showdown. No, you're mm. even close. I think there's only eight episodes total. You maybe only have two left. Yeah, I've been forcing it true? down, like with no liquids, just dry, and it's not great. Right. <laughs> um, but okay, so here, here's the thing. This is a show 
and I'll call him out if he's listening right now, my father, I feel mm-hmm. obligated to watch because my father watches it and it's something we can sort of converse about. Yep. Where literally it's gotten so unfun because I'm like, this sucks. This fucking sucks. And he's like, yeah, I get it. I get that you don't like it. Like I, you know, enjoy this little bit of it. I'm like, how can you like that? It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> that sucks. I don't like being that negative. Right. But brace yourself, Mike. Embrace yourself, listeners. And I feel like this is not a spoiler to say the send off of Henry Cavill is one of the most unsatisfying things you will ever see (laughs) in your life. It is so low energy, low stakes. There is just nothing to it. I have got to make it to see the train wreck then if I'm that close. But like there is parts where this whole show divulged into just feeling like Bridgerton. Like it's all this interpersonal conflict. There's no action. It's just this politics. And it's like. Oh, baby, this is rough. Right. So, um, but I, I do want to see that send off. It's, it's like it's not even worth getting excited about. Trust me. It's, it's like just, the most it's boring the... parts of oh, Game of God. Thrones without any of the good parts of a Game yes. of Thrones. Yeah. Well, um, occasionally now this season, well, they'll do a slow motion sword fight. And you're like, mm. OK, yeah. Mm. The first yeah. season started strong. Like there's mm-hmm. I really like some most of the first season, but um, it just kind of fell apart after that. And when they were yeah. shooting this season, did they know like Henry Cavill's not coming back as they were shooting it? Probably Maybe not. They found out. Did um, you guys? Did any of you guys watch the that spinoff with Michelle Yeoh? No, dude, I tried it. It's also bad. Mm. <laughs> it's it's hard to it's it's bad because it's like this isn't Gar- like people will like The Witcher because either they played the game, so they like Geralt and that side of it. I don't like the world enough to just have mm, rando right. randos you know yeah so it, it just, the, the universe can't sustain that just like right. john wick's universe cannot sustain the continental i don't care what you say no. well we'll see um, on the cock september 22nd <laughs> on the get cock. on the cock <laughs> that's right check so, in check in on um, the cock man. are you on the cock you know it well that's um, <laughs> too bad that's unfortunate yeah, metal twisted on the cock once right <laughs> um well sorry that's right sorry. any other shows well, that's let's, it for let's, shows. We're going to hold on yeah. movies because we're figuring out the plan going forward in <laughs> full transparency. But uh, <laughs> basketball is a game. Twisted Metal is a game. And we play game. Oh, so wow. Maybe now's the time to shift gears. Another car joke. Heck, yes. Uh, right after Hit this. Hit it. <laughs> Pedal to the metal. We're back here on Normies Like Us. We're going to talk a little gaming uh, when we're doing a little watch up. Boys, what have you been gaming? We've done a couple episodes, so let's get an update. Uh, right. Obviously, y'all are still playing a little Baldur's 3, Jacob? Mm. I've been playing, yeah, I've still been mainly playing Baldur's Gate 3. I've been playing a lot of it. Uh, mm-hmm. I know, Mike, You there may have been a new game that came out that sort of diverted your attention. Right, but we're still doing our weekly uh, group Baldur's Gate game that's so right we're, we're still playing Baldur's gate and every once in a while okay. I'll get a couple hours on it so i have been but i don't want you Baldur's to abandon gate. your uh solo playthrough either no no carlac is going to be very upset if i don't visit yeah um, but i do so. have yeah i have a couple things that have happened since our episode that yeah, i can yeah, talk yeah. about um Let's update it yeah one thing that i thought was cool so this happened like pretty much right after we recorded our episode like that same night i was playing and yeah. mike was watching me we were streaming and mm-hmm. on Discord, there's a little bit of immersive gameplay that happened that, that I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So I could tell a little story about that. Yes. Um, but I was in the Underdark. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler alert, there is, you know, the Underdark is a place you can go to. Um, Fairly early. Down it's in Act 1. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a pretty big location. Uh, bigger than I expected. I'm wandering around doing all the shit down there. <laughs> um, I run into this colony of mushroom people, right? The Mykonids. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and they're pretty cool. They're pretty chill. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I have to fun go guys. fight these. You say they're fun guys. They're hey. fun guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, they send me to go fight these Dwergar, which are like these uh, drow dwarves, kind of. Yeah. They're like drow dwarves. Oh. Um, and they're slavers. They're, they're bad people. They're deforesting the mushrooms kind of territory. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're upset. They're encroaching in their They're land. killing yeah. this one mushroom chieftain joins me and they killed his whole tribe. So I'm like, all right, come with me. We'll go kill these people. We'll go fuck mm-hmm. them up. And um, so we go down there. Also, this so this mushroom guy joins my party and he's pretty chill. I'm like, this guy's cool. One he's of like his powers is he can... Giant uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And his powers that he can raise something from the dead and making it a spore servant 
So uh, you can raise horrifying. a corpse, turn it into a spore servant, and it can you know follow us around. So we get in a fight with some hook horrors, uh, which are these big nasty monsters in the underdark. Kind of like Gigan um, from Godzilla. They have hooks for yeah. hands. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hook horrors. Uh, we kill them. Creature. Yeah, we kill them. I have him resurrect one of these hook horrors. This is all important for the story, but um, yes. so I have a hook horror spore servant that's also following around in my party now. So my party's getting pretty big, pretty legit. We're ready like to a fourteen you know, foot tall like Velociraptor with blade arms, just yeah, yeah. full of zombie zombies. Well, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like a mushroom zombie. Uh, and then yeah. I've got this like Blast walking, us. talking mushroom walking around with me. It's great. Um, mm-hmm. So we go down. Mission. We find these Dwergars. Uh, we have a battle with them. Mike's watching me. Uh, we we fight all these Dwergars. Um, and then at the end of the battle, this is minor spoiler for like some side content, but basically. After I kill all the these Dwergars, this mushroom guy is like, hey, I want to talk to you. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. He's like, all right, good job killing these things. Um, now I need you to go kill the other mushroom chieftain, the place that we just came from, that colony, because there can only be one mushroom guy in charge. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you were whoa, cool whoa. with him. And <laughs> yeah. he's like, no, sorry, You're there can only guy? be one. <laughs> so I was like, I thought this chill mushroom guy, turns out he's a bad guy. He wants me to go kill the other mushroom people. I'm like, I'm not having that. So I'm like, no. no way, man. I'm not doing that. He's like, all right, well, then you're going to have to fight me instead. So now I have to fight this mushroom guy. But strangely enough, the mm-hmm. spore servant that he resurrected, when the, when the battle when the battle starts, it doesn't side with him. It becomes my ally. So it's uh-huh. in the in the combat, is it's, its profile picture turns green, which means it's not part of my party, so I can't control it, but it's fighting on my side. So yeah, we all right. team up, surround this guy, just beat him to death. Hey, good. Uh, we get well. What the, the killing blow was that? The hook horror, if I'm remembering, it was yes. the folly of his own creation. It was, it was so. Uh, I'm trying to kill him in one turn before he even gets a chance to attack. So I attack with my whole party. He has one hit point left. The only one left is the hook horror spore servant that hasn't <laughs> gone yet. It goes up, swipes him, kills him, and then it just. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't like fall down dead or anything. It just stands watch over this guy's body. And it doesn't, it's not in my party. I can't control it, but it's not fighting me. So I just, it's just kind of keeping a vigil over this battlefield forever. And then I leave the location. It's cool. I wonder if you baited an enemy towards there, if he would join the fight against him. Like he's just kind of ever present now, which is interesting. Ever present. He's not aggroing against my party, but he's just like chilling there. It's an ally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, thank you. You turned against your master because you knew that he was wrong. And uh, it was just like this fascinating bit of like immersive gameplay that happened. Yeah, this like weird thing. You know, you got it. You got a whole party. You got a mushroom guy. He has a pet. And then the pet sides with you because even he feels like this is wrong. Yeah, but this is wrong. And that's just uh, this one thing that can happen in this game out of the many thousands of things. But this I game. I think you've been trusting crazy. mushrooms too much lately, Jacob. <laughs> I oh, always yeah, trust yeah, mushrooms. Yeah. You always put your trust in the mushrooms. Anytime I find mm. a random mushroom mm. in the forest, I immediately eat it. I uh, don't check if, if it's poisonous. Yeah. <laughs> if they want to no, but then when I came murder, back to that, that. Uh, when I went back to the mushroom colony, I was like, hey, that guy was trying to kill you. And they're like, oh, you, I shall name you Peace Springer because you've done so much for our colony. So I, I'm, oh, like a, I'm like a god to these mushroom people now it's great it is cool they're really intimidating but yeah i did that as well but i didn't realize like before fighting the dwager that i could raise the dead so i never even thought of yeah being a hook horror so that was really mm. interesting and i was like dang but i did ensure he got the killing blow because i thought he was cool too i'm like i'm gonna make sure that you get your revenge so i just knocked the guy over and made sure the mushroom guy killed him and then same nice. thing he's like all right let's go genocide those other mushrooms i'm like whoa dude i'm sorry yeah but what just a game a my friend uh a mm-hmm. friend of of the show, uh, Adam, but not Adam, who has been on the show of the Cargo Bay. Um, right. He told me he's just getting to Act Three, which I assume yeah. is like the Baldur's Gate part. And a lot of people have said the game doesn't even start until you get to Baldur's Gate. And I'm not going to spoil anything, right? Because the whole main act, everyone's saying we're going to Baldur's Gate. See you there later. Yeah. Um, but he says he had over a hundred hours in just Act Two. So sure. I'm like, what the hell? This game is gigantic, and I'm just in the early parts of Act it Two is... right now. Yeah, it is huge. I am just, I just finished Act 1. I put 60 hours into Act 1. Wow. Yeah. I'm I finally moving into Act 2 um, because I had to do all the Underdark stuff. And then mm-hmm. you, 
eventually you go somewhere in the Underdark that it takes you to a whole other map, and that has a bunch of stuff to do in it. And then there's the mm-hmm. whole mountain pass, which is another thing. Um, yep. And then finally you move into the what's considered Act 2, which I won't reveal too much, um, but I did some something that's really cool about Act 2. So you, you're in Act 2, Mike. You've met yeah. a character named Jahira, right? Yes, you, you, there's a miasma in the lands. It's dangerous out there. So there's the last light in where everybody's kind of holed yes. up. That's the hub in the very beginning. The of last light that's in. It. Yeah. And when you go and there, over there, you meet an, an old woman named Jahira. Mm-hmm. Uh, Karlak kind of starts fangirling out, right? Yeah. Like, yep. who's this Jahira? Now oh, I know, um, as a player of Baldur's Gate One and Two, Jahira is a character from Baldur's Gate One and Two who's one of the original companions that could join your party. Oh wow. Oh. Um, and that was like 150 years before this game. So That's she's so like, cool. you know, at least 150 years old. But um, so I was like, Jahira, I know who that That's is. Really cool. So that kind of blew my mind. So this whole like it's an Easter egg for like the first two games. And it doesn't even happen until act two. So it doesn't even happen until 70 hours in. Uh, yeah, th- it's a very D&D thing too. like a DM would finish a campaign and then keep the player characters alive as NPCs and future versions. Yes, of the game. yes. So That's very, very cool. So um, I was like, that was awesome. Um, yeah, and so I'm just going around the last light in now talking to people, and there's just so much to do in this game. There's so much content. Every NPC you talk to has like something interesting to say or like some quest to give you. Like it's fascinating. Like you don't even realize until you've played the game, like how much there is in this game, right? Anime variety in Act Two is so different. Like every everything, it feels like a completely different experience getting to there from Act One. So like it's not yeah. getting boring. It's always feeling exciting and like I want to do the next thing. It's it's really incredible. Yeah, they change and the locations the, a lot. Yep. Um. Yeah. The biomes. It, it's incredible. And um, the four player campaign we're doing is still Act One, but we're having shenanigans. Everybody had to lock their inventory because. Somebody keeps stealing the gold when it, whenever somebody's in a conversation, <laughs> people are pickpocketing each other. I don't know who would do that. <laughs> right, right. Just yeah. <laughs> that um, been fun. Yeah, and you're getting into some of these side the you know, party members' side quests of like their personal quests, like Shadowheart. You're learning more about the followers of Shar and Salunite mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And it's just it's just fascinating, you know. Yep, yep. It's really good. Like the character development's great, you know. Uh, so yeah, the companions are they're really what drive it. I mean, it. It is the interpersonal relationships that motivate you to play the game. More, yeah. You know? And even the, like the tieflings that you meet in act one, they'll pop up later and they'll be like, Hey, I remember you. But really, like you said, everyone you talk to is like, Hey, I'll meet you later in Baldur's gate. Yeah. So by the time we get to Baldur's gate, I'm going to have like a hundred different people to reunite with and be like, Hey, hey remember you? me hey, from 80 I'd hours like ago? That quest, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I can't imagine well, what a city's going to be like. Like if we're just I know like it's one, like huge. It's one of yeah. the you know one of the biggest video game cities that's ever been seen. So My you're God. Like, we're at a single inn in the middle of the woods, and it still feels like this game's huge. Well, what is a city? I haven't seen any spoilers. I have no idea what it looks like, and I, I'm very excited to get there. But it's going to take me 80 hours. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm loving it. We might have more check-ins on more watches with how long awesome. this game is. Oh, right. This will <laughs> truly be a topic for like two more years. Now, oh. uh, Mike. I know you're also playing a new game right now. I want to hear that for well, sure. But I, yes, but I just want to say about Baldur's Gate, the oh, please. it is coming out on PS5 like within a couple days from when this episode is airing. So True. Colin, so, you can pick so, that up pretty soon. On PC already, so that's yeah, obviously mm. you're going to improve the console experience. Well, I get it. That's I the question. We'll see. And also, we'll the see. Harpers are a big part of it now too. So we have that movie connection. Yeah, yeah. Thank I just you. feel like if I can't play with you guys, it's not going to be too. I worth thought the it, same but... thing, but wait yeah. till people start trying to come on to you, <laughs> and then <laughs> then he'll be hooked. Um, Fair enough. Uh, that's true. I can see all the dicks. Uh, <laughs> let's. What I was going to say was, let's yeah. uh, take a break from video games real quick and just stay on role playing. Yeah. And mm. say, uh, taking this Baldur's Gate energy that you guys all have, mm-hmm. we all had a very cool experience recently. Where for the first time ever, for me at least, uh, we played a virtual tabletop uh, role role playing uh, campaign with past guest uh, Fast and the Furious fan Cole mm-hmm, uh, DMing right. our group and played a little Cyberpunk Red. Yes, yes, we're using Roll20.com, which is a site that you can sort of easily put campaigns together for different. Have, not only did Cyberpunk, you guys have any experience with that? No. 
I watch a lot of live, like during COVID too, a lot of live play D&D things that I would watch on YouTube, they switched to digital. And so Roll20 is one of the most more popular uh, VTT, virtual tabletops, as Colin said. Mm -hmm. There's other services wow. too, uh, but that's one of the most popular, I think, and most easily accessible. But I'd never used one, but I had seen it in action, but it was cool to actually uh, use it. And it actually ended up, I mean, the figured out the kinks. It was, I liked it. A ton of yeah, fun. it can be, there's some issues at times, but I mean, it's free to use, right? So that's a big mm -hmm. uh, benefit right there. You don't have to pay. Um, and so there was some janky elements like the video chat wasn't really working for us. So we switched to discord for video, but um, some other people like it, like sometimes would have issues, but for the most part, it worked out pretty well. And we're all learning it too. And, you know, we're yeah. learning a new game mm -hmm. system. So there are a little bit of kinks, but once it was rolling, man, it was uh, so much fun. To, uh, oh, shout out to Cole. We were rolling. Yeah, Big we were shout rolling. out to Cole, putting that campaign together yes. and just Quick. organizing everything, keeping us all in line. And then our party, you know, we all have different jobs, different kind of things that we're doing in the group. So it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah, we yeah. got a little combat, a little social interaction. There's pickpocketing happening there too. I'm not doing it. I'm That's just true. talking to people. Um, but we could mention sure, sure. our characters, I guess. I'm, I play Danny Rio. I'm just coming from the Bama Danny Sprawl. Rio. I'm out east coming over. Danny to, Rio. Uh, Night City, you know, so you got all the cool shit over here. So he's like a net runner, hacker guy. You know, he does the, the hacking. So that's Right. Crazy. Maybe my favorite character in the game. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. man. You're too kind, brother. But yeah. Yeah, my guy is uh, uh, Franz Wagner. He's a med tech. Uh, and he's a, he's a, you know, he's a ripper doc he grew up on the streets. He, uh, helps out, you know, he, you know, uh, you know, runners come to him when they get injured and stuff. He fixes them up. Uh, you do some mods. And, uh, yeah, he, he, he gets high on his own supply. He's got a cybernetic glove thing that he does, um, surgery on people with. So he, he's having a lot of fun being like a mad doctor. That's right. We're trying to collect drug samples for this company right yes. now so they can reverse engineer it and like. My guy has literally typed into his little net running computer how many vials everybody's picked up because I don't know if I trust needles to have them. No. <laughs> yes. And I'm no. trying to get like Joe's character had some and I was trying to get him to give him to me and stuff. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very it's fun. Good. Colin, it's good. How about you? I am the tech of our group. I am Ven Mocha Shop. Uh, and I'm Heck like yeah. an old sort of like, uh, uh, I don't know, kind of like homeless guy. And also an energy we didn't get into. His whole thing is going to be that he wants to build the perfect woman robot. Uh, so he's definitely going to be in sure. love with this character that Cole created, this pop culture bartender, Britney Spears bot, which I thought was so funny and so That's clever. Incredible. And yeah. Cafe Ots. What a what a great uh, setting, the stage yeah. place we, yep. we hung out at. Yeah, and the, we've um, got... Well, I was just saying, yeah, we... setting-wise, this is mm -hmm. Cyberpunk Red, and if you've played the Cyberpunk 2077 video game and you're familiar with Johnny Silverhand, and that sometime in the 2023 era, he blew up a bomb at Arasaka, you know, and that's caused this fallout, and the sky is always right. red because it was a pocket nuke. So this is like mm. in the years after that, the Johnny. internet is kind of devastated now. And uh, yeah. Because that happened yeah. in Night City, my character knows about it, but he grew up out east and he wants to come to Night City and be like, this is this is where it all fucking went down. You know, it's like a right. name for that shit. I just think it's cool that we all have, we're all different. We all have different jobs, like the tech, the uh, the hacker, the med tech. We got a rocker boy, which I assume mm -hmm. is like a bard of, of cyber yeah, tech, basically. basically. Yeah, it's a rocker we've got a, boy. We've got a corpo. We've got uh, a, the driver. The getaway driver, right? And then yeah, nomad. Got, who am I forgetting? Yeah, the nomad. Know. That's right. The nomad. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, we've had some shenanigans, you know. Like we we got in a fight, and then I just tried to push a guy down, and it didn't work, and he pushed me down, and then Jacob <laughs> right saved me and shot a wall. I tried yeah, to shoot someone. I shot a wall because the way the grid was laid out, the board, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> The, but we had to learn the about wall the didn't go across the whole square. So I thought I could shoot that's around right. the little gap, but apparently that's not true. So I just did something very heroic seeming and cool looking. Mm. And then I shot a wall and really yeah. uh, made a fool of myself. Yeah. And then I think there's another attempt by Andy's character. He put like a radio on his gun and like shot and <laughs> he hit him, but didn't. Yeah. Kill him. And then my character was just frustrated with the bad rescue attempt and just walked up to the guy and took his gun and pushed him down. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is not yeah. murderous ass. But I am a, I am a bit of a sharpshooter. So I did get a, 
get a shot in on him later. No, it's been, oh, it's that's been right. a lot of fun. That's right. um, yeah. No, it's good times. It's good times. Yeah, I'm I'm really digging it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's cool to play non D and D tabletop games because I've really only yes. played D and D. Yes. And so this is all D tens and D sixes. It's you know you don't have D twenties or anything, but it's a. It's I a was advocating system. for Shadowrun because I like the mixture of fantasy elements with cyberpunk. That's mm-hmm. just kind of if you can't decide if you want to play D and D or cyberpunk, just play Shadowrun. You can, it's like right. the best of both worlds. You know, por qué no los dos. Yeah, I I said as a kid, I think in one of our Dungeons and Dragons episodes, we would do this sort of, I guess, homebrew. My neighbors and I sometimes mm-hmm. called, um, uh, Jesus, what was it? Like bullets and bastards. Like it kind mm-hmm. of was like, a, but it wasn't like, yeah, there was no nuclear fallout or anything. Like it was just us being like, you're the wizard, but you have a gun. <laughs> yeah, sure. Cool. <laughs> yeah, lightning bolt. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Pow pow. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I love it. I've never experienced a different kind of uh, role play system like this. And it's, it's very cool. Yeah. And you know, I've been addicted to the cyberpunk genre ever since the anime came out. I'm on my fifth cyberpunk book written by William Gibson. So like I'm right. able to use all that knowledge as like just background flavor text for my, and also knowing the bring uh, up shit from the books and it's like ads. Incredible. Back story, you know? yeah. yeah. Knowing the, the game, you know, so much about the world and the history of the world from playing tw- cyberpunk 2077. Right. Right. So it, it, it helps me inform my character motivations because I have just a sense of the timeline and like what is that we're in between 2077 and 2020. We're in like 2040 right now. So like, right. The events of the game haven't happened, but you can draw a line between the core books and figure out what point of history we're at. And it's like, oh, who's president of the new United States of America? And like, that's all stuff that I'm thinking about, like my character, because he's out east. He would be Night City Barack right now, Obama. unincorporated, or- unaffiliated. It's just a private city in this time. It's not part of the new right. United States yet. So right. it's kind of corpos have taken thing. over kind of the government and stuff. So like, yeah, Night City is just a fully corporate city. It's just completely yeah. run by the corporations. Um, Arasaka has been kicked a perfect out, system for the time being. Yeah. yeah. So it's just interesting <laughs> geopolitics for the North America, right. I guess. So, yeah, it's a cool time period to have a camp. And I'm excited to have another session soon. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, we we'll got to probably check plan. in at some point and see how it's going, right? Yep, very yeah. looking forward to it. Uh, so, but yeah, let us know now, Mike, please. What have you been playing? Yes, yes, yes. The uh, the well, what I said on Baldur's Gate, I said I'm not even excited about this anymore, and then I installed it, and then immediately became obsessed. Uh, I wow. got, let me pull the hours, but it's Armored Core Six: The Fires of Rubicon. Uh, I can't say AC Six because of Assassin's Creed is a thing. <laughs> I kept um, getting confusing. confused when you were texting that. Yeah, yeah, but I I absolutely love this. I played Armored Core as a kid. Um, obviously, you know, um, two well one two three. And I stopped at like four. Answer, um. And so it's just a revival of the mech genre. It's made by From Software, the guys who did Elden Ring. Um, so Never it's heard very it. difficult combat, robot sim. You can pick your arms, your legs, your head, your core, your weapons. You have four weapons, two shoulder, two hand. That's control the four shoulder buttons. But I said controller be gone. Uh, and because I play Star Wars Squadrons, I mapped everything to a flight stick and throttle system. And I figured wow. out a streaming setup. So I am going to be streaming intermittently. And how's that been off. going? It's been going oh, great. Yeah. I defeated the boss I was stuck on when you previewed it with me. Um, wow. I talked to my friend Adam. He said he was watching me play it. He's like, my friend's on this with a controller and he's stuck on the same part. And then I beat it before he did. So, wow, you know, I'm pretty good. No, but like it's doable. The, the joystick is viable and it feels very immersive. And I'm, I'm having so much fun. I'm trying to see the hours here, but uh, nice. absolutely love it. Um, it's just a really great robot sim. I'm addicted. It's the well, it's mech your game ever made, I think. 25 wow. hours so far and it came out like last friday damn hey yeah. good for well good for <laughs> you you're i remember your Baldur's gate hours being astronomical as well yeah um look dude it's your favorite video game company it's from software so mm-hmm. you know much deserved I'm, I'm glad you're having a good time with it yeah you said immersive would you ever consider not just using uh, the throttle setup just for mech be- and, and flying, because obviously that is what it's for, mm-hmm. but like doing one of those goofy streams you'll see where somebody plays Elden Ring with, you know, the Donkey Kongas or like, you know, a dance yeah. pad or whatever. That would well, be you cool. Know what? 
Chris, I am streaming this and I'll put the link in the description. If you guys want to look, find my Twitch, if you're more than welcome, it's going to be, there's not a set schedule, you know, we'll get there, but anyway, check it out. It's awesome um, though. We watched, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I got hand cam. So if you want to see the joysticks going and face cam, right. two cameras got on the this whole setup, so check it's it all awesome. out. Thank you, thank you. It took a lot of. I work. want to see you like... play some uh, Baldur's Gate three and map the map that to the flight stick. I did. Yeah, could you do it, dude? Oh, really? During the beta, well, that was the, the controller oh, support okay. was so dog yeah. shit. I did do that. Um, <laughs> the controller is better than that version that I had right. back then. But ironically, with this setup, because there was no demo, I wanted to like test to see if it was viable. So I did boot into Elden Ring, and I assumed it's going to be similar ish controls. You know, two shoulder buttons, whatever. So. I got it set up to play Elden Ring. Wow. As How that, that and I had to just tweak it. I mean, I didn't fight anything difficult, but I was able to walk around and go swing fight, my swords uh, and like, stuff. Yeah, fight Melania with that and then oh fight Margit. <laughs> just a Melania only stream with the joystick. Yeah. To start with that. That would be awesome, dude. That's pretty interesting. Maybe I'll I'll consider that when I beat uh, Armor. Let Club, me but... joystick her. Your new yeah, you can be there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the next level no, Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, joystick her. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's been cool. I think the joystick helps feel the immersion, but you know, yeah, oh, for it sure. is the greatest mech game ever made. They've done a lot of uh, quality of life improvements. The previous games, people would joke they're like a debt simulator because you have to buy all the ammo for your robots and those. And if you shoot ammo mm. in a mission or you get blown up, you have to pay the repair costs. So you're like just going sure. into debt. And this, they're <laughs> like, all right, you're not going to go into debt. Anything you buy, you can sell for the 100% of the same price. So if you build a robot and you don't like it, you can sell everything and then just build a brand new one. They're really encouraging That's you good. to experiment with your build. Yeah. You can save presets and then you simply sell all your parts and buy to load that preset. So you can have up to 40 different builds, maybe more, and you can just load them in at any time. So they really sure. encourage experimentation, but the combat and the levels are very difficult, but they're like extremely difficult sprints. Nothing's like 30, 40 minutes. It's like right. a specific set of challenges. Well, I like go. the yeah. The sort of gameplay loop of you're going out on a mission and you have to, mm -hmm. you know, you have like a contract or whatever, and you have to take down this thing and then you get paid at the end, then you can buy different things. Like I think that's a good way to set up the game kind of. The game is actually the menus, right? Like the game yeah. is building the robot. And so when you do a mission, you get paid. Great. I can buy that thing. New parts are constantly getting unlocked. Some missions just reward you with new parts outright. Doing the training gives you parts. So like you have a reason to do the training and they'll just give you free guns and stuff that you can keep or sell. And then right. if you sell them, you can buy them because money means nothing here. So it really is great to just get rewarded. It's very difficult, but you beat it. And then at least once your hands are shaking, like mine were when I beat that boss, it's like, now I know I have 30 minutes in menus just to chill out. Um, yeah. Hey, so it's very I intense, love menus. Then you have time to relax. Yeah. Well, I Jacob, love menus. I love inventories. Mm -hmm. um, I do have some interest. This probably be a game I pick up eventually, but not yeah. right away just because there's so many, like I'm still playing Baldur's Gate 3 and then I have my own game coming out that I've been very interested in. Uh, right, right. And as of, you know, the day this episode comes out, it'll be uh, tomorrow that I can play this game, September okay, 6th. Yeah. Uh, and this game, of course, is Starfield, the new Bethesda space RPG. Oh, yes. Um, pew, 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 pew. And so I'm looking forward to that. And like you, you know, I was saying in the Baldur's Gate thing, like, man, am I even going to have time for this? But I, I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to be playing it on launch day because I, I did pre-order it uh, like a sucker. I pre-ordered a pre -ordered Bethesda a game. game. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're not going to can... make enough of them. They're not going to make enough files. <laughs> no, but the, the advantage is you can, they unlock it 24 hours before the okay. actual release so you can install it and everything because it's going to be like 100 gigabytes or whatever. Yeah, obviously. Um, so oh, that way yeah. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to sit through. 50 gigabytes, I'm just saying. That's not bad. That's not Games bad Games are at all. so big now. Though. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Starfield's but, massive. Well, yeah, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty big. So having it all installed and ready to go and actually being able to play it on the 6th is going to be great. So I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to be trying out. I don't know how much it'll hook me or, you know, if I'll go right back to Baldur's Gate or what. But um, mm. what I've heard so far, it's a mixture kind of, I mean, I'm not getting my expectations too high, but people are saying it's like Oblivion in space, which to me sounds pretty good. So I mean, I like Oblivion. I, would say. I hope it's as good as advertised because it's been like 11 years or something since we've gotten a new Bethesda game, a new IP. Is yeah. Like fucking first time in it. 
eons. Well, you know, some people are complaining online because someone like, you know, if you walk 10 minutes in one direction on a planet, you reach an invisible wall. But like, okay, who gives a shit? You're not going to ever walk 10 minutes in one direction. Like you can do that right. in any game. I don't understand why people are upset about that. Like, no, you can't just walk around an entire planet, but like that would take an intensive amount of like work and resources to make yeah. in a game. And you have thousands of planets. They couldn't do that for every planet. That would be unfeasible. So, yeah. and people are saying like, oh, the gameplay, like it looks like, you know, Bethesda hasn't innovated enough or changed enough. Like there's still that core Bethesda loop where you're talking to someone, you're going out on, on a mission, you're killing some people, you're going, you know, you're going to a place, killing some people, getting a thing, whatever. To me, you know, that's all the game needs to be. I'm not expecting or whatever settlement, settlement yeah. nearby. Yeah, yeah. I'm not expecting like a game change, like a world changing kind of game. I'm just expecting a fun game that's like No Man's Sky, where I can have my own ship, I can customize it, I can hire a crew, I can go around to different planets, I can explore Build bases, right? I love building bases, and you know me, I love inventories, I love yep. selling things, I love you know all uh -huh. that stuff in games. So. We'll see. And this, I do want to get good, Armored Core for sure. Yeah. No, that's a good way to look at it because I think Armored Core, you know, for me, like it's the perfect game for me. Like it's exactly what I like, like tinkering in the menu and building the robot and testing things right. out. Like I spent four hours just tinkering with the controls. Like it's in my DNA to tinker with things, yeah. right? So it might not be for everyone. You know, I love the crunch that it has. And Starfield, is, in a similar way, it's like the game for you is like a big Bethesda person with a base building. Like on yeah. paper, it has everything that Jacob wants in a game. And I hope it's as good as Armored Core was to me. Like, because like, I know you're looking forward to it. So fingers crossed. I hope crossed so too. You. Yeah. I mean, after Baldur's Gate, it's like the facial animations cutscenes aren't going to be as good. I know Ooh, that. Man. Like, So it's going to be some things I'm going to... You know, but you can't have your expectation that every game is going to be as good as Baldur's Gate Three, as AAA be developers impossible. have pointed out. <laughs> yeah, impossible, dude. But um, hopefully, it's good. Yeah, in Armored Core, I mean, I was even telling you when I was watching you, mm -hmm. like it reminds me. There's a game that I like a lot called BattleTech, which is a mech game that is a yep. turn-based strategy uh, combat game where you have a, a lance of four mechs that goes out on missions. You can move them around. Mm -hmm. And it's all, you know, a lot of strategic decisions and stuff. But you also spend a lot of time customizing the mechs and buying things in, in menus and stuff. And that's part of what I loved about that game. So I'm definitely into the whole mech thing. I'm yeah. le I guess I'm less of a, like, I don't generally like, you know, games where you have to fight a boss and then, like, die 30 times before you can figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah you're pretty much frustrated. only fighting bosses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, they give you checkpoints before the boss fights and you get all of your resources and healing back. So it's not like a souls mm. game. Like there's no bonfires, but there'll be a checkpoint and resupplies. And like, it, it it's like, we know this is difficult, but we're going to make it easy on you to try it again, I guess. And you can even switch and your from robot what... from that menu. Like if you lose yeah. and you have a preset, you can switch to it and try the boss with a different robot. So they're really kind. From what I've read online and stuff, like from what I've heard, most, like almost every boss in this game has if there's a certain way you can build your robot or a certain mechanic you can take advantage of that makes the boss easier or makes mm -hmm. it like doable, right? Which is very So it's all about figuring out that method. Yeah. And that's why exactly. they want you to have all the money you need to experiment. That's the whole point. And I think it's I like it's that, a very yeah. hard game, but it's like very kind. It's 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 gonna ask you to step up, but it's giving you all the tools you need and you have to experiment. And I love it. Um I have right now spider legs that can fly infinitely like i have the quad legs i just unlocked oh, tank legs like some darth maul that's awesome dude. yeah so it's, it's pretty cool he has a giant shotgun so i just have a, a giant robot scaled shotgun and that's you know how i wow. fight people missiles on my back but um yeah th there's definitely ways you could have builds that would break a certain boss fight but then it would be dog shit in the next encounter you know it's, right it's all up to um i like that action. more like even in elden ring you have a certain like a certain build you're doing of your character and then you stick mm -hmm. to that build you're not going to want to change you're not going to change what weapon you're using and like what stats you have so right. i like the idea of you can change your robot from mission to mission you can sell all the parts build you know buy something else make it completely different if you want to yeah right now i have four presets i have like a light and agile one i have like a all-around one then i have the four leg one and i have a big tanky one and it's like that'll be my like general that. layout yeah and just, depending on what the mission calls for the other thing That's too awesome. is it's not like Elden Ring. It's not like Dark Souls. It's all mission-based. 
there's a ton of invisible walls and I'm just like, I don't care. Uh, I don't care yeah. that I know that yeah. it's a sandbox because what's in that sandbox is super engaging. It's, it's literally the best mech game ever made. If you like right. robots at all, if you like Gundams, you want to feel like a Gundam or an Evangelion pilot, like Hell this yeah. is the game for you. Like it's the best mech game ever made. It's the most satisfying That's what, to play. Start here. Yeah. yeah. I just think people need to realize like not every game needs to be Elden Ring or needs mm. to be a huge open world type game to be good. Like many different kinds of games can be good, right? It's the most accessible of any Armor Core game and it is a niche genre. And I think it does a lot to ease new players into the system but it's not holding your hand so i do think it's like gonna have the broadest appeal of any mech game because of from software's popularity but it's not it's not being anything it's not trying to be something it's not like it is right. unquestionably a crunchy menu-based mech game with good quality of life so give it a try if you want to get yeah. a robot you know in starfield dangerous. if you dream of exploring space this might be the game for you i'm hoping it's at least decent at least, I'm hoping it's better than Fallout 4, which is a game that I put at least 100 hours into but don't love. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping it's more Skyrim level or something like that. And I'm hoping... I mean, Bethesda is clearly wanting this to be their next Skyrim where they can just rely on it for the next decade that people mm -hmm. will still be playing it. They can re-release re it on different platforms and stuff. But it could be their next Fallout 76. So we'll just have to see how it goes, right? Fingers crossed for you, dog, because I know how excited yeah. you are. Uh, Colin, do you have any thoughts on either of these? Is there any interest in either of these? And is there anything you've been playing or you're looking forward to playing? I, I think, once again, my criticism is just a little bit of too big, too complex. It's just scaring mm -hmm. me off as a guy who's really downshifting into casual gamer mode. But oh, yeah, yeah. I will say, <laughs> so BG3 is not the game that you want to play for casual. But I think mm -hmm. I think... Starfield could be where you're just flying from planet to planet, doing bullshit missions, killing people, looting everything. Like you don't have to really pay attention to the plot, I don't think. That's we'll true. see how the writing is, but I feel like it's gonna be a game where you can just zone out, fly your ship around, and it's gonna be a lot I of was fun. a Skyrim boy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm so we'll see if it lives up to that. <laughs> it's stressful. Yeah. That's the thing with FromSoft games, is like I never have a chance to relax, you know. That's kind of why I, I like Elden Ring is that there's some downtime in between big the fights. The menu can... is the beautiful thing in this. I'm just like, okay, yeah. just click away. But um, the Next. combat, I'm <laughs> relaxing. Uh, text. I'll finish one encounter, and then I'll know there's more enemies over there, and I'll just take a second. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta go over there now and fight right. them. Oh my god, all right, here we go. Um, but the one thing about this that I don't do another from soft, I wanted to mention is they have uh, a PvP arena. It is mm. going to be the coolest PvP. I never do Souls PvP, but you can fight against other humans and their custom robots. You're just right. like, how fucking cool is that? That's like the coolest thing. I want to fight. I wonder if there's duos, but you can have little emblems, but I want to PvP people and I bet they're going to be insane. And I wonder if the joystick is up to the task. I but, feel like the joystick will take it to the next level. Yes. It, like it if I had that right. set up, I would be more willing to dive into yes. this game i think well, i have not played one second of it with a controller i have no idea wow. how that feels like so anyway that's my rant i'm telling you a hydraulic chair mike yeah i need to get the the 40x uh version <laughs> you know hell yeah just get the full simulator room well, there's this thing in japan i might check i'm going to go to japan for my birthday in a couple months but they have these rooms that are five giant mech simulators right and these guys are right you know, whatever people show up with these cards that have their pilot information they all get in at the same time, and it's a team of five mech warriors playing some other team of five mech warriors at another Damn. arcade in another part of the city or country. And that it's sounds this awesome. Fucking thing. Was, it's insane. Was, Dave and uh, Buster's for me as a kid, we had something like that. I, I right. love those old school machines, dude. It kind of reminds yeah. me of Virtual On, the, the other yes. arcade robot fighting game with two sticks. But uh, this is some serious biz. But, you know, Japan loves giant robots, you know. That's right. Yeah. It's like, but let me ask you, Colin. Of these three big games that are coming out, Baldur's Gate mm. 3, Armored Core 6, or Starfield, which is the most likely that you will play? I've gotten a real high off of watching you guys play Baldur's Gate 3, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like that, it, in the D&D &D of it all, it just seems so appealing. Yeah. In the the penis measuring, like just every <laughs> aspect of it. Circumcised, only, uncircumcised. Only camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of options. Shoes uh, only. That's right. Right. Don't want to step on a rock or something. No, go yeah. protect your feet. Absolutely. 
well, that's yeah, great. I hope you a lot of get fun. in. I hope we're, you enjoy it. Yeah. We're lousy for good games. And also in the end of September, we're getting Cyberpunk 2077 DLC, the, which is kind of like a whole yes. new game. So wow. Jesus yes. Christ. Not when time. Jacob was just saying, like, yo, I'll, I'll wait to check this out. Like, what was hitting me and what you just said, Mike, about the avalanche that's also just coming up down the road is it's getting to holiday gaming time. Like, mm-hmm. I am going to get some serious gaming time in, but it's going to be a little later from now. And then I probably will get my hands on one of these three games we talked about today. I'm trying to figure out how much blood I need to donate in plasma to afford a, a Steam Deck before I go. Because I like if I had Baldur's Gate available to on me, the Steam Deck, oh, that would be great. Flight, are you kidding me? <laughs> it would be nothing, you know. Oh like, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I think I need to do it because it's a it's a solo trip, so it would be nice. You ride a lot of trains in Japan. Just fucking whip out some Baldur's Gate, do some dialogue, sure. throw it in your bag. Yeah. I need to get a Steam Deck. Can you get armor armor core on the Steam Deck and just? But I wouldn't have those controls play it with anything. Yeah. But this right like, no by law, I signed a contract with Miyazaki-san <laughs> himself. I should find the first software building, see if they have a big robot in the lobby. Anyway, yeah, dude, I'll update you on that as that comes closer in the next few months. But, Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, I think we could shift over to final thoughts on this. Whatcha? You know, we're just out here doing the dang thing. You know, and we'll catch you on the other yeah. side. We're back here on Normies right. Like Us, where we're wrapping up. Whatcha? Mike's out up top, 260. Hooray! Yeah, Man. seriously. It's a lot of candles on the cake. Yep. Thank you guys for uh, keeping on, keeping on, doing all these episodes. It is a lot of fun every week just to talk about stuff that we are generally passionate about. I would say care about, but I don't know if I care about Revenge of the Fall. <laughs> but it's fun to talk about <laughs> things with you guys. Um, Absolutely. And I did forget, uh, up at the top, we forgot to mention we were talking about some Disney shows and stuff. Uh, Ahsoka has started. Or the, mm. By the time this comes out, we've had three episodes, maybe a fourth. This is the same day that episode four would come out. So uh, anyway, mm. um, I don't want to go too into it, but I'm really liking it. It's my favorite Star Wars thing, like besides Andor, like post Revenge of the Sith. Mm. Like I like it almost. It's right. It's close with Mando season one, I think. Um, wow. For me. But that being said, I've seen Clone Wars, I've seen Rebels, I know these characters, I know the lore, and like I'm just really liking getting to see it like come to fruition. And I think Dave Filoni has always been good, but if you're not someone who watched Clone Wars and Rebels and doesn't know the history of Sabine Wren and Ezra and, you know, Kane and Jarrus, yeah. like, if that I don't really care about any you, of those characters. Yeah, um, you might not be so excited. Gasp! The first I have not started has to do a lot of heavy lifting to, like, mm. do all that catch up you know so i i could see it being hard I, outsiders yeah i have not started it i was not planning to watch it but probably will now because hint hint we may be talking about it in the future um so i might be required by this podcast to watch it mm-hmm. by law so, by law will come to your home um, we'll they will throw me in star wars jail episode that's right well <laughs> you know jail. colin hasn't even watched andor in about two years so i feel like he needs to go to star wars jail i That's well true. yes um shout out to cargo bay i don't know if they're going to be covering these i imagine they would have or they will oh, yeah, but I, I don't believe their coverage has started yet or at least not at the time of this record mm-hmm. um jacob i'm evolving into the ultimate hater dog <laughs> i yeah. do not like <laughs> star wars it turns out mike i did not like these episodes and yes i have not watched andor mm-hmm. so i i'm just trying not to suck right now i don't want to take anybody's joy away yuck anybody's yum yeah I, I feel like i'm a hater now too like the trailer yeah. didn't do really much for me even ahsoka as a character i'm kind of indifferent on and like the rosario dawson live action version i just really could not care less about she's what such she's a about, downer she's mike doing. she's not yeah. fun and cool bro <laughs> if, if if she had to kill an inquisitor when she was 16 years old she has oh my been god through the most shit she has been through the most traumatic shit she was in the clone wars Damn. as a teenager like like there's a lot Fair. happening with that character and i understand Ah, it's not working because you don't know what I know. But fans of that show, like Fair. everybody, I think holds that Ahsoka is like probably the best character in all of Star Wars canon. Really, uh, as far as good guy characters, like to me, she's just wild. like the little kid sidekick to Anakin in the Clone no, Wars. No man, she's the yeah. little sister. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, there is a lot. Snips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, she Ra's here. He Man's <laughs> sister. You're right. like great. <laughs> what there, there's good pathos of like she was trained by Anakin like and she saw him yeah. get corrupted and she has that right. kind of 
weight too of like she lost him the same way obi-wan did and you know in a different way so there, there's survivor guilt yeah yeah and then you know all the other stories to me been on. but if you don't know that you don't care yeah i mean rebels is also a show i tried to get into but never really clicked with me or i never really continued it it's mm -hmm. not bad to me it's just like just not you know who's, i don't have time to watch every show in the world you know uh, i watched all Clone rebels that is filler like there's ways yeah. you could watch certain arcs to condense it but right. you don't have to watch everything man it's like yeah. watching anime you don't have to watch you know you can skip all the filler i'm watching every episode of one piece before we record an episode about one piece it's a thousand episodes the anime, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna start now and never turn um, the tv off i'm proud of you but rebels <laughs> i mean you have your favorite actress playing one of the rebels characters uh right right mary Hera's, elizabeth uh, winstead yeah, we had right. a yeah, that's Mon Mothma in one episode. Kind of so. unfair, Mike. You're you're I'm kind sorry. of preloaded to like this thing. Yeah, yeah to, to be fair, she's probably my least favorite live version, mm. like a, adaptation of these characters in this show, the live action. I think yeah. it's fine, but I do like the way Sabine Wren and uh, they made a freaking loth cat puppet. But anyway, if you like Rebels, you're probably gonna like it. If you've never seen any of that stuff, you'll probably be like these guys, and it's just not gonna land. To so, me. It's yeah. it looks better than like Obi Wan and in the Book of Boba Fett, so I'm not saying it's going to be as bad as those shows, uh, or I hope it isn't because I mm -hmm. really thought those shows were bad. And season three of Mando bad. Um, really, mm -hmm. other than Andor, I've been a Star Wars hater for a few years now, but I don't want to mm -hmm. be a hater. You know, I want to like things generally, so I'm not trying to be cynical. Come to the dark side, Jacob. <laughs> no, you're just Good. Not yeah. to this Good. So, right. Honestly, but yeah. I'll definitely check it out at some point. Yeah, it's the production value is high. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But yeah, as a fan of those shows, I'm really happy with what I'm getting. And I'm just sorry that you can't uh, participate and feel any of that joy. Yourself, I feel, so. yeah, I mean, production value, I don't know, because I've seen some stuff that looked like a lot of volume, a lot of, you know, cheap set looking type stuff. So I don't know. First three episodes, we've had some pretty neat space fights. There's a good interior. The spaceship interior is really good. There's a table that pops up out of the ground and pops into the ground mm. so they can train. It's like a really cool I idea. Like I don't know. I'm, I'm here okay. for it, but okay. I'm a sucker. I'll for check it out. Yeah. Anyway. So that's no let us know. I'm in a sucker. <laughs> I'm in a sucker. That's yeah. I get that shirt. Um, hey, if I watch Secret Invasion, I can watch this. You know, oh, yeah, still I can watch me. anything. That's true. <laughs> But anyway, that was just, I forgot to mention that up top, but we are yeah. uh, final thoughts here. Um, yeah. Anything you guys want to mention or, you know, bring up? Hey, forward? I'm going to, I'm just going to do a very quick, not even a segment, whatever, but, uh, you know, check it out. When we started this podcast, the concept was stuff we're watching, stuff we're playing, stuff we're reading. Mm -hmm. um, and when Joe left, kind of the heart of our comic book knowledge left, I, I enjoy yeah. comics, but he's kind of the guru I would go to, to get mm -hmm. updates and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to shout out an app, Comic Geeks, uh, which is an app you can get on, you know, any device. It literally tracks your, your polls, you know, what comics are out this week. It gives you everything that's published. Uh, you can sort of put in your interests and find new comics. I've been going comic crazy. I'm buying a ton of stuff. I'm just going to lift up. This is wow. for our oh, wow. visual what real stack quick. on video. Yeah. Yeah. Check Huge us out stack. on YouTube. If you're listening audio only, if you want to see. <laughs> So check it out to shout out Adam comic. once again. Wow. Yes, uh, a guy who was on our LV426 episode. Mm -hmm. So get this. There's an imprint now Marvel is doing for the first time called 20th Century Studios, where they're changing their Fox-owned yeah. stuff into comic books. Whoa. They do three books. This was the first, Alien. The others are Predator and Planet of the Ape. So they're like adaptations of the movies? They're totally original stories. They're oh. just using those properties for the first time Marvel in the comics and saying, hey, let's give them their own banner or whatever. The alien comics suck. I just mm. have them because they're alien comics. But the subtitle is Thaw. It takes place on an ice planet. They dig up a xenomorph. Cool idea. That's okay. what Alien vs. Predator was. It's basically Thing slash AVP, Mike. So you're 100% right. By the you're way, 100% yeah. okay. Speaking of Alien, I think I mentioned yeah. last week, Noah Howley is making that Alien show, so stay tuned for that. Fede Alvarez all. finished an Alien movie pre-strike, mm. so supposedly we'll get that at some point, that it's kind of going to be like a Prey style. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't mind that. We played, we liked some Aliens Fireteam Elite, you know, back in the day. It's a good universe That's if right. you use it right, but sometimes people don't. So By the way, Neil Blomkamp... 
Neil Blomkamp oh, was going to make an alien movie. movie. Yeah. But really? then he was make um well he was oh. going to, but then he said in an interview that like potentially Ridley Scott watched Chappie and said, This guy can't handle an alien movie and like Fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's very funny that's what happened. Well Chappie not I great, love but it. District Nine is like one of the best alien movies. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yes. And now Gran Turismo, guys. Come on. <laughs> Yes. Hey, who thought a gamer could become a racer? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Not that's me. Fine. I'm going, going to become a quick. robot pilot. In the future, when everything goes to shit, they're like, you think I'm these gamers can pilot our mechs? I'm like, yeah, I can. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of tie into a robot pilot. So this is a totally new comic book. This is called Void Rivals. Oh, okay. wow. That guy in the cover is okay. a big robot. Very Gundam looking. It's well, he's a Transformer. Transformers Gen oh, this is, yeah. Transformer, guys, wow. guess what? This is a Transformer we've met. This is Jetfire. This is the one that like oh, smoked wow. cigars and was a Smithsonian airplane or whatever it was. <laughs> oh, you guys yeah, remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah. Sure. You guys remember that guy? Incredible. So check Looks this out. Like this is Boyd a Rattles. Robert Kirkman book. Robert Kirkman, The Walking Dead creator. Yeah, like a, a huge, know. awesome uh, comic book writer. Yeah. Invincible, which yeah. maybe we'll do an episode of that. I, I believe season two is going to come out pretty mm-hmm. soon, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, check it out. His imprint called Skybound, which is part of Image Comics, has the right to Transformers for the first time. So he was like, we're going to soft launch into this. I'm going to write the Transformers book. I'm going to write a Duke spinoff and a what's his name Cobra Master what what's Cobra the Commander. name of those guys Cobra Commander thank the you Cobra I'm gonna do two GI Joe one shot books that also tie into what I'm calling the Energon universe so kind of what we saw hey. at the end of Beast Wars sure. right very hey. weird yeah but first I'm gonna do an original property that's in the Transformers universe that would be like if I was writing an 80s cartoon at the time and it's mm-hmm. called Void Rivals. And Mike, basically the plot is Enemy Mine. Have you seen that? Where yeah, yeah. it's two alien yeah. species land on a planet and they ba- they're they work at together. war with each other and yeah. they have to work together to get on. Classic. So yeah. interesting enough premise. But I'm very Star excited Trek for all Beyond. the Transformers stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. That's um, very cool. And then I'll do my last one here because I got to show mm-hmm. this off to Mike. I've been doing all the Gargoyles comics. Wow. It's from the creator of Gargoyles. It's our guy, uh, Scott Weissman. And like, oh my gosh. we're up to 10 issues now. Like I've, I've got, this is the, this is a variant cover. That's the VHS cover that when we were kids yeah. of the first three Absolutely. episodes, Awakenings part one, two, and three, if you recall mm-hmm. that had this VHS cover. I loved Same. it. Oh, I love um, it. Got all the fucking comic books. Have the um, one shot Dark Ages, oh, which is a prequel really cool. comic book, dude. A fucking Virgin comic cover. Look at that. It's awesome. It's got every fucking gargoyle on the cover. Very cool, dude. Now, Mike, this is called. It's called Dark Ages. It's set before the Gargoyle Human Alliance. It's a prequel series where Hudson is still the leader of the gargoyles. And mm-hmm. if you recall gargoyle myth lore, you only get a name. If you're like the leader of it, like a human will like call you something and you sort of adopt that. That is why right. Goliath has a name before all the other ones are they like, all to pick I'll them. be, yeah, I'll be Brooklyn. I'll be, you know, Dodger Lexington. Stadium. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll like, be La all that bullshit. Exactly. Yes, exactly. All that crap. Well, sure. So you find out Hudson's original name, Mike, was Mentor. Mentor, huh? And he had this whole history as the guy who was in charge. Well, I love that. But just being in charge of like the fucking gargoyles and like his right hand man is clearly Demona's father. Except wow. again, if you know gargoyle lore, mm-hmm. all hatchlings are raised by the entire society. There is no yep. single parent uh, given to you think an I don't individual know gargoyle. <laughs> of course you know that, you fool. So wow. it's just a very interesting. She's the overarching villain of the show. And Jacob, she is uh, Deanna Troy, obviously, um, yep. Yep. Sure. in the cartoon series. But just so interesting to get background on her uh, and, yeah. and her lineage and stuff. So I've been loving it. They're garbage. I think they're really oh, bad, man. but I, I love collecting be, them every week. They can't be worse than the world tour arc of the show. Mm, like that was pretty they're bad. They're kind of that quality. I know oh, no. he disowned all that stuff, but it is very like late in life cartoon series where you're like, you just have to set up so much stuff. This isn't fun anymore. It's so. like the Ninja Turtles 2000 series. They just did the last half of the last season was like, and time travel and like space. Yeah, lasers. why not? Like, why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like Hudson. 
Like they yeah. do, he has some tragic stuff. Spoilers for Gargoyles lore, but when he learns how to read and then gets like glaucoma or something and then can't read, I'm like, this is fucking. They crazy. give him like gargoyle dementia. Like he was was he voiced by uh, Keith yeah. David or is that a different one? No, he was Ed Asner. Keith David was the the leader Goliath. And then oh, Jonathan right, right. Frakes was uh, Xanatos, the human. That's right. Yep. Okay. So uh, who's not uh, really popped up at all? No, but so. he's not. He, of course, he's in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well, I want that's, uh, yeah. if you guys want to get into comics right now, as I'm going to say, there's a ton of good stuff. I, like October, I've got like my polls already set up on this fucking app, so I know good stuff's coming out. Where it's like nice. in a, a American Psycho, the book slash movie is going to get a comic book for the first time. Yes, I will be checking that out. Like other weird, like I don't know, like cool, like spooky season comics coming up. I, I highly recommend if you're like a comic, you know, Luddite, uh, get with this digital thing. It, it'll help you track it and help you get excited about stuff and find stuff. And that's comic sure. geek or geeks, plural. That. Comic geeks. Yes. And I, I Freddy I, I, versus Jason versus Michael Myers. Well, and they had that Ash series. <laughs> I would kind of no. kill for that. I get all my Archie horror stuff. No, we'll get, we're going to get to the alien versus predator versus ape. <laughs> that's, that's my fear is why would you do those three what is this leading towards <laughs> some big event yes yeah absolutely yes I hope so. <laughs> that's all i have but to say plan of that. the apes is the part that does not mix it <laughs> well they had those Ape new movies together so. strong yeah yeah it's time travel the xenomorph comes down it's fighting a predator and then fucking caesar comes out and he's like we've got this together <laughs> Ape together that would strong. be amazing yeah. no i, I yeah. guess would be cool <laughs> Malfoy gets caught up in all Why of cookie predator? <laughs> right? Oh, I love that. Yeah. I would love that. I, I want Roddy McDowell era apes, though, like that makeup. Yes. Of the original. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It or, kind of, or the Tim yeah. Burton makeup. Oh, my version. God. Yeah. I God if about Marky that Mark was yeah. in the background, I'd. Helena Bonham it. Carter. Yeah. You know what? That's something that we might do one day. Here, this is just a throw out for the watcher. Just all the idea. planet of the apes. Have you seen if we did all, all the originals? The apes. No, there's like seven originals. I, I know yes. there's like a and bunch they're of them. nuts. I have I seen love them, them very all. recently. Under Mike, the Planet of the incredible. Apes. I own yes. them on Blu-ray for which a has time that I moved. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, a that's a bummer. Goofy stuff. That's if we did all about. of those, then the Tim Burton one, then the three newer ones. Yeah, yeah. that could be a that could be a series. That's a, that's that's a, a lot of movies. That would be bananas. Yeah. I will think about it. I would. You would like to see that. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. But I love all yeah. the '70s ones. There's ones where the apes time travel to modern day uh, America or whatever, and they become celebrities yeah. because they're so oh wild. Gosh. And then celebrity gets to their head. Like one of them becomes an alcoholic. It's like the the. <laughs> You know, the dangers of being a public figure in the 70s. Yes. It was like, wow. They put their kid in a zoo, amazing. Mike. It's terrible. <laughs> they do. It's fucking wild. Uh, there's one where a group of humans is, lives underground and worships a nuclear yeah. bomb. Yeah. There's a lot of wow. wild stuff. Yeah. They get that very Star trek Yeah. They, they are kind and of. And if you guys. Like, yeah. Uh, Twilight Zone-esque. Yeah. Sorry, I get if excited. you recall, I pitched in, I think, maybe our, our previous uh, Star Trek episode, but there's a ton of Star Trek comics out right now. So I, I mm, think yeah. there's stuff you guys might be interested in finding, too. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, y'all can read, learn to read like Hudson and check out these comics. I would yeah, get them just for I, the covers. The covers are pretty cool, I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. Your wall. I love them. Nice. And shout out to Colin yeah. wearing his Strange New Worlds Star Trek shirt. Mm-hmm. I believe uh, is about to get a comic. Lower Deck Strange New Worlds uh collab you'd say that's right 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 yeah. nice um but that's that's i'm wrapped up there how about how about you guys jacob any final thoughts anything last thing looking you forward play? to uh there's a lot of gaming a lot of big games came coming out in the past couple months uh a lot of tv to catch up on new movies i need to catch up on and mm. uh yeah just gonna keep yeah, watching it's, keep playing yeah it's really mm. hard to have two entire lives between Baldur's gate flying robots I know. And staying alive as a real person and this all happens to be happening during one of the busiest times of my recent years of just i'm just in my personal life i'm just very busy yep. have less time than usual for yes. gaming and watching things so it's and been I a want to spend more time than usual doing all of yeah that. yes it's, it's, it's a bad it's a real struggle. schedule is truly packed yeah <laughs> if uh-huh. i could just quit my real life and just play Baldur's gate 24 hours a day i would you know right you're telling me it's these gamer kids are going to become a tiefling for real <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, David Harbour. I'll teach <laughs> teach us how. Um but yeah. a gamer could become a 
tiefling. You think a gamer yeah. could actually play they saw a true on a story. tabletop? Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get David Harbour uh, on the phone. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, David Harbour yeah. was a tiefling, technically. He was Hellboy. Oh, he's That's right. right. He got his horns <laughs> cut off. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's from the Infernal Plane. That's where the That's portal right. was. That's hey, truly what he was. Yeah. Of the nine hells. That's all the, the Nazis opened up. Anung oh Sun Rama. Yeah. Huh. Got yeah. it. All right. Well, I'm glad we figured that out. We know Avernus is tied to the Hellboy universe. Um, That's right. Well, we know he'll <laughs> yeah. do anything for, you know, a big enough paycheck. So he was I, a Red Guardian I, twice, if you think about Hellboy too. Actually, yeah. What do you think about Creatures Commando, Jacob? Cre- creature hey, Commandos. You know me, James Gunn. I trust him. Can't be worse than, uh, you know, the DC the past couple of years. So also cool. shout out to Blue Beetle. Has anyone watched that yet? No. Nope. Um, unfortunately, a huge box office bomb, like I unfortunately predicted, because Zolo, Maraduena, we love him. Yeah, Cobra we love Kai. him. Mm-hmm. We yeah. do. <laughs> and hey, you know, I wasn't on our Flash episode. I did recently watch that on Max, oh, and it was boy. the craziest <laughs> film I've ever seen in my life. So just yeah. let me put that on record real quick. Mm-hmm. Nick Cage. Wow. Thank you for... I love that. I love that. <laughs> I loved... I Boy, I don't know. I don't you know. Love no the else in my theater seemed to know what I knew when I saw that spider mm. in Nick Cage. I was truly aghast. But... You love George Clooney popping up at the end. Mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't believe it. The Aqu- you guys didn't talk about the Aquaman part. The Aquaman thing at the end is so oh, disrespectful the to the character. <laughs> yeah. It is like, it is truly, they're like, hey, let's fucking convince everybody Aquaman's the worst again. And you're like, no, Jason Will has worked so hard at this. <laughs> well, he still has another movie coming out. You. Yeah. yeah. So he'll have a proper send off, I guess. I could guess. Say. Boy. Yeah. Before he's recast as Vandal Savage or something. <laughs> Lobo. DCU. Yeah. Lobo. Yeah, man. I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and I don't, I certainly wouldn't mind if you guys would leave a like share a comment tell us what you've been up to recently and we really appreciate absolutely you us, especially if you've been around from the early days 260 my if you've God. been around from episode one to 260 i mean Thank first you. of all you're wasting your life listening to what us, are you but... doing that's wild <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thank i you. definitely have not else. listened to 260 episodes of this podcast <laughs> no so you should not mm-hmm I no, barely listen to you guys sport. when when you talk. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just waiting for my <laughs> um, to say the thing that I want to say. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, yes. We all admit it. Uh-huh. Uh, no, it's been a great ride, though. Thanks, Normies, for listening to us. And uh, see you on the next one, right? Yeah. yeah, if you could see my screen, it's been a Baja blast. Uh, wow. At least. <laughs> Like Mike said, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, we mentioned we're doing our new long form series coming up. I can't remember if we mentioned that, that we're not going to be doing that into October. Obviously, we've got the spooky season coming up, but yes. we're looking for some suggestions for some last minute September stuff. So, yes, you hit us up with some emails right now, some suggestions. You might sneak something in here, whatever you want to hear. So, rate, review, subscribe, That's right. leave us a message at normies underscore like underscore us and check and out Colin, the YouTube page. Normies yeah. like us I was thinking about it. We will be covering something pirate related in the month of September. That's right. Change new worlds. Hint, hint. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Lower decks. Lower decks. Um, sure, even better. Let's yeah. say a lot of pirate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's a, a foreshadowing hint for you there, Norm. That's My right. timbers are shivering. <laughs> um, yeah, we do appreciate. It. I guess I guess this is the, this is the outro, everybody. We uh, it's been fun. It's a uh, yes. Here's a with your host. More. Yeah. Uh, this is Colin. This is Mech Pilot Mike, professional Mech Pilot. And this is soon to be Space Captain Jacob. That's right. Sails Ahoy. I was going to say Baldur's Jake. (laughs) Baldur's (laughs) Jake the third. Baldur's Jake (laughs) three. Yeah. Yes. Baldur's Gate based on a true story. Absolutely. Fires of Mike (laughs) Rubicon. Yes. Yes. We just call it Ruby. Four. F O R. A C F O R. Yeah, okay. Based Thanks on for true sticking story. around, guys. Based on a true Bye. story. Bye. Next time. Bye. Bye. I don't know why I Star Trek at the end, but I did.